Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making one of these things. Because I want to. So, if you've ever watched one of my live videos, you've seen this and it's how I switch between camera angles and have a lot of fun with it. The problem is, it goes blinky blinky blinky. Now I could just change the shutter speed or I could be a woodworker and make a cover so you can't see it. Let's do the second one. So the first thing you do whenever you're figuring and designing a project for the first time is you need to figure out exactly how big it's going to be. What are the outside dimensions? What is the maximum space it can hold? Or in some cases, the minimum space like this. I'm trying to figure out how high up the bench do I need to be to cover all those buttons so you can't see them. And so I found it was about three inches. And if I brought in this three and a half inch tall board, uh, it covered them more than enough just in case my camera angle is a little higher in the future. So I need to make it three and a half inches tall. How wide do I need to be? Now I need it to cover the the A10 Mini, but I also need space for pieces on either side, and then I want those legs to be a certain distance long. So it's basically going to be a three-sided box that covers it up. And what are we going to make it out of? But white oak. And particularly, we're going to use some 100-year-old white oak. This came out of a desk that I uh, saved from a pile a long time ago, and I've been slowly using it for other things, and just little piece after little piece, it works great. 100-year-old white oak quarter sawn, really beautiful stuff and it will work perfectly for this. So I'm gonna cut it to length for the back piece and then two of the, the side pieces. I wanna make the side pieces long enough so that there will always be enough weight, it won't tip over, um, but not so long that they take up bench space. Now we need to get rid of all of the old finish on this and actually flatten these out. The boards had warped a little bit over the years as it was stored in a garage and got kind of wet. So we're going to plane it all down and smooth it out. If they were a little bit flatter, I probably would just come in with a card scraper, but these had all kinds of junk on them, and I think at one point it was a painter's bench. Um, so yeah, they needed a bit of work. On the back one, I'm going to rip off a chunk so that the wires can go underneath. Uh, so the back will be about three inches, uh, but it'll be raised up by about an inch or so. And then the sides will still be the full length. So this will end up being the bottom of this piece that is getting trimmed off. Once we cut it, then we can come into the plane and smooth it out and make it look pretty. Now for the sides, I actually want to have them taper. I don't want them to be full height all the way back. And so I'm just gonna make an arbitrary mark about there and then make an arbitrary mark on the other side and then go, yeah, that angle looks good. And I'll play connect the dots between those two angles. Then we can come in with a saw and rip it down or is it really a rip if it's on an angle? I think we should come up with a new word that means something off of an angle of ripping. <laughs> okay, um, back to woodworking. So once we get these cut down, then we have the two sides and we want to dovetail them into place. Now when I actually do the dovetail work, I want to see the dovetails from the front. Uh, so I'm going to be putting the tails on the backboard. Uh, which, I don't know, is the front the side facing the audience or the side facing me? I guess I should think about that. Before actually doing the dovetail work, I'm going to joint it all up and uh, smooth it all on the planer, make everything nice and pretty. For the dovetailing work, we're going to put in our depth mark, and this is the thickness of the other board. Uh, so we can set up the marking gauge to be the thickness of the backboard, put those all around, and then try and figure out how big do I want these tails to be. Using dividers is a great way to balance them out. Um, sometimes I just go by eye and say, yeah, this looks good and this looks good, and I don't mess with the dividers, and sometimes I bring out the dividers. I guess it just depends on how artsy-fartsy I want to be. So the, there are going to be two tails on these, and they will connect into the side panels, uh, but they'll connect higher up onto the side panels rather than all the way at the bottom. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. For the angles on these, I just eyeball them. They're somewhere around a 1 to 6-ish. Um, there's nothing specific about the angle. You don't have to be picky about it. Um, I like to eyeball them and leave the tails ever so slightly different. Uh, that way there's a, a hand touch to it. Once we cut out the waist for the two half pins, then we can come in and chop out the waist in the middle where the pin will go in. Stay away from your line as long as possible, sneak up on it, and then pop out the rest of it. And I like to go in and chisel out all of it rather than coming in with a coping saw. I find it actually be a little bit faster to do it with the chisel than with a coping saw and a chisel, and it takes out one step. And I'm usually trying to remove steps whenever possible. I love this trick of using the block plane to hold up the other end. You set up the block to be sticking up the same thickness as the block plane, and then rest your board on there. It makes it very easy to mark lines. Um, I, I, I absolutely love the system because it's, uh, it's just straightforward and you know exactly where your lines will be. Now, I didn't really care about cutting on the 
tails side because whatever the tails are, I can mark them out of the pins. But once I have the tails cut, I need to make sure that the pins are done accurately. I want to make sure everything on these is nice and clean. You can gang cut them by stacking them up, and so you're doing all the same operation on all of your boards at one time. And then you flip them over and do the same thing on the other side. And of course, they're never quite the way you want them to be. You can see how this is tipping on both sides, but it's pinching in the middle. That means I need to remove material in the middle and don't touch the outside, other than I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on it, remove a little bit of the saw marks. Um, I just need to do most of the stock removal on that middle pin to make sure it slides in. So I like to use a series of files to come in and detail it in. Um, get a little closer with that. This one is a rather rough file and I have a finer file I can come back with. And then you can slide it down on there and I love this point when it just comes right down on and I'm barely tapping it. Uh, that one I was really, really close. I think I took that one apart and put it back on because it was taking a little more force than I wanted. But here you can see how it looks, um, except for this is going to be pointing at the camera, and I want something a little bit more than that on it. But we're going to do that after the, the glue up, and I guess you can figure out what I'm going to be doing on here. But uh, yeah, uh, so for the glue up, I'm just using regular wood glue because I actually have time in this video. We're going to put it together, let it sit overnight, and then come back the next day and do the work on it. Um, a lot of times if I'm rushed, I'm going to be using an epoxy, which I can set to cure at a specific time. Um, but in this case, I get to use regular wood glue. I like to actually use the vise whenever I can to set things up. And particularly these, I want to clamp it back, and I don't have that other board to clamp it to. So I'm going to put another board on the other side and then use the vise to then squeeze up against that and pull out the excess. Mm, yay, I love a little bit of squeeze out. <laughs> Makes the world go round. Then we can set that aside and come back to it later. Now that it's all together, we don't need the marks on it anymore, so we can take those apart. It's very important when we're doing dovetails that you actually mark out the boards so you remember which board goes to which spot and in which angle. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> For all the cleanup on this, I like to put it up in the vise and then plane in. And so if you plane from the joint into the board, uh, you can be shearing those fibers in. You can get a nice clean transition from one to the other. It gives you a beautifully smooth surface. That way I, I like to leave my pins and tails just a hair proud so that I can come back and work them in. And uh, I love this moment when you plane it down and the, the, the joints just come out. Uh, it's amazing how much better they look after you have planed them. Um, all the gaps just tend to disappear. For the carving on this, I go on to Google Images and I find a pattern that I like. Um, I will uh, just kind of play with things, and this one needed to be a little bit longer, so I put it into Microsoft Paint. Uh, I find that a really simple project, and I can print it out to an exact size because I can specify in the printing I want the image to be this size. And I can experiment with how long is this going to be and matching those up. Then I glue it down with a simple glue stick uh, from the, the kids' art supply. I, I really like doing it this way. I've done it a whole bunch of other ways and transfers and different taping methods. Um, but I really like this because the very next thing I'm going to do after this is I'm going to come back through with a card scraper and clean up the surface anyways. And the card scraper removes the image really, really well. So I'm just going to be running around this with a V-tool. And if you've never done surface carving, this is one of those things you really should. I've got a bunch of videos on how to do it. It is incredibly simple. And if you can even slightly follow a line with a pencil, um, you can do this. With a mallet, just doing light taps gives you a lot of control. You can try and do it freehand and push. Um, but when you're pushing, you end up having actually over controlling and you often push it past the line. Whereas a, a mallet with light taps, you get a lot of control on this. This V tool is a 60 degree, I believe it has six millimeter sides. Uh, this one's from uh, two cherries. I've got them from a shaft uh, as well as several other places. And it is it's probably the key woodworking tool. If you're going to get one to start with, get a nice V tool. I've got a bunch of links to them on the, uh, well, probably down in the description, but I'll also have them on my website as well as all the other tools that I normally use. This carving probably took me about eh, 15 minutes or so. It's relatively quick and easy. And then you can scrape off the pattern, clean off the surface, and we're almost ready for finish. Everything at this point is just kind of doing the detail work on it. But we're going to be doing a bunch of chamfers because this is wood by right, and chamfers are what separate us from the animals. I wonder where I've heard that before. <laughs> nice block plane, run around the corners and clean it up. Just kind of soften the edges a bit. And it's amazing what that can do just to make things feel better. I like using the rabbit block plane for actually doing these cut in chamfers. It allows you to get right up tight into the corner. Um, that has made things a lot easier. Then I'm going to hit with a very, very light pass of 400 grit sandpaper. This just uh, fills all the pores with dust. And that dust in the pores actually will wick the, uh, the, the finish down into the pores a little bit better. 
um, you, you get more of that contrast when you do a light sanding than if you just have it straight off of the plane. So I'm going to coat it with boiled linseed oil, let it soak in as much as it wants, and keep coating it on, leaving it heavy. And once it has stopped soaking it up, then we wipe off the excess, apply some paste wax, and there you go. Um, really simple little project. Is it necessary? Is Are other people going to build this? No. Um, but I like it, and it kind of hides up that flashy and adds a little bit of texture to it. And now if you're watching the lives, you can see something kind of fun. And it makes me happy. That's what matters, right? No more strobing. <laughs> I love fun. So you have it. A uh, shield to stop the strobing when I do lives. Um, I've had a few people talking about the LEDs on here, and I can't change the frequency because it goes through this and into the... And there's just a lot of other things. So it's easier just to make this to uh, cover them up. And now you can look at this rather than all of the little buttons. So <laughs> fun little project to uh, make things a little bit different. And for those of you who don't know, we do a live every Tuesday night where sometimes we're doing a build, sometimes we're doing a joint, sometimes it's a Q&A, and we're going to have like, a lot of fun with that. So if you want to hop on those, um, Tuesday night on Wood by Right 2. So I know this was a simple project, but if you have any other thoughts, questions, or ideas, things I could have done better, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them, and thank you. That helps out the channel. Anytime you put a comment down there, thank you. Uh, anytime even it's just comment down below. That means a lot. And there's a whole bunch of people who put comment down below. So thank you. That means more than I can say. It helps us get in front of more people, helps the algorithm, and it's fantastic. It's just like hitting the like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to go even farther, there's a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Without patrons or members here on the channel, those are people who've clicked the little join button, uh, we wouldn't exist. So thank you for that. If you would like to help out, uh, that means more than I can say because we are completely sponsored by you guys. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to the description down below or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The real reason for this is I don't want people to know that I'm using electricity.